two industry experts in nuclear energy meet to talk about an important topic, decommissioning. Yves Brachet has been in the field for over 40 years, with great experience in cask design and licensing, and involved in many nuclear transports and decommissioning projects. And Jan Klein has extensive experience in lifting and transporting heavy and big objects with millimeter precision, in nuclear, but also in other industries. What can the two learn from each other? And what's needed for an efficient, safe, and successful nuclear decommissioning project? Did you work in the nuclear industry your whole life? I have been working uh, all my professional life, I mean, around 40 years in the nuclear industry, but I have been uh, five years in a, in a company which I have been supporting uh, industry, all type of industry, oil industry, uh, paper mill, uh, nuclear, and anything like that. But more or less, I have been involved in nuclear, yes, all my life, yes. And what, what are the biggest challenges you see in the decommissioning? The challenge is the decommissioning is, is completely depending on the type of plant you are decommissioning. It can be uh, it can be the, the lack of data when you are speaking of research reactor or, or things which has been built in the, uh, let's say, 50 or 60 years ago. The other challenge is the more recent plant is that uh, you have a very narrow space and uh, it's very difficult to, let's say, to work in this narrow space to remove yeah. the parts. Yes. Yeah, now that's also what I recognize as well, what we face if you work in that, uh, in that field. So from a uh, regulation point of view, uh, do you see a difference in the decommissioning and just when a plant is live? It has to be different because uh, the risks are also completely different. I mean, and the, it would be a big mistake to, to apply the, the same regulation for, uh, let's say, active plant where you have a lot of fissile material and things like that, and a decommissioning plant where you have no more fissile material and no criticality risk. I mean, so, so this uh, regulation is different because of that, it's also different because of the countries. The yeah. country, all the countries have different regulations. Yeah. Mammoet is a worldwide uh, company. Uh, we, uh, we are working on, uh, in all kinds of different plants, also nuclear plants all around the world. And we do see all the differences. But there are definitely also things which are just uh, the same, yeah, from, from a security point of view, from a training point of view, how you to deal with uh, the, the local requirements. Yeah, that's something that we can provide also together with our local people uh, and who are just aware of the local requirements. And then we have in, in the Netherlands, we have a centralized unit where all the exp expertise is being held, all the knowledge is being stored, and that's a team of uh, people who are just there working already for a very long time. In the decommissioning, yeah, which is just coming up right now because uh, we see the changes in the uh, political environment and, the, and also from the society, how they look at nuclear. How do you see the role of a company like uh, like Mammut in this uh, in this field? The, the role of Mammut for, for me is 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 rather obvious because you know one of the problem of nuclear has always been to work in a very small circle. The nuclear people were working with nuclear people using nuclear techniques and, and things like that. And a company like Mammut uh, can bring to this nuclear let's say small circle a lot of experience coming from the the other type of industry. And uh, this is what, what we need in nuclear. Experience coming from outside in order to, to improve the process, to decrease the cost. So we are, uh, we are involved in new build yeah. in nuclear. Many places, the different types of uh, reactors all around the world. We are involved in maintenance. And I think maintenance and decommissioning, they are really, really close. Uh, because also uh, when you have to do maintenance, you have to replace uh, steam generators. You have to do also the engineering to deal with all the, uh, the regulations and whatsoever. And then also we see we, over the years we built quite a bit of experience with, with the whole team within our organization. It's true that the, the experience of Mammut, and for instance, in steam generator, generator replacement has been, uh, has been very well recognized in the nuclear world. I can, yeah. can testify that. One step further would be to be involved a little more in the, in the large component, like the pressure vessels and the, the other steam, steam generators, the pressurizer and things like that, that you can remove in one piece from, from, from uh, let's say, the, the plant. And what I've experienced over the years, that it's extremely important to be early involved. So early involvement is key. Because then we have a chance to, uh, to develop plans, the right plan for the, right, uh, for the specific uh, problem. We can come up with a specific solution. There was a kind of, let's say, tribal knowledge in the, in the nuclear industry that you, you cannot move the pressure vessel because the pressure vessel is very heavy, is, is very deep in the reactors and things like that. 
And you know, I have always been convinced that even replacing a pressure vessel in a, in a plant could be possible. Yeah. And of course, dismantling a pressure vessel as a wall uh, is also possible, and it has already been done. And I'm sure that for mammoth handling, let's say 500 tons or uh, let's say 300, it's not a problem. No. Guess, so. no, if you look to our equipment, that is also a little bit always uh, how it goes. We see developments in, in, in a industry, and we will adjust and come up with other equipment to meet the requirements of that industry. And if the industry is evolving and the weights are going up from 500 ton to 1000 ton or either 2000 ton, we will just develop equipment to accommodate those requirements of the, our clients. And I think a nice example of that is, uh, everybody knows that, is uh, Chernobyl, what happened there. So uh, after the disaster, it was co uh, covered with concrete. And then over the years, there was an, there needed another shelter. So a shelter was being built. We did the lifting of the panels and we developed a special skidding system to move the whole roof mm -hmm. in one piece over the whole power plant. And everybody was thinking that's not possible. And we said, yeah, it's possible. But also there, it was years of preparation. And so talking with all the people involved, all the parties involved, what do we need? What are the requirements? What are the criteria? So we came up with a technical solution and then we built it and then we executed it. One, one big, big thing in, in this uh, non-cutting and, uh, and removing is that in some cases, opening the, what's the name, the containment concrete mm -hmm. uh, part, sometimes it creates problem because if you for instance if you want to remove to remove the pressure vessel i mean at one time you have to it's difficult to let's say to go through the existing uh, plant so you have to open this but when you remove this pressure vessel you have nothing left in the yeah. in the containment yeah. so it's not a problem to open it and uh, then you close we, it. i've also worked on an uh, i've been there myself on a project a long time ago that even we had to uh, take out the steam generators out of yes. uh, out of the through the roof so first there was a hole cut in the, in, the, in the building, in the concrete, and then we lifted just the, the, the top piece of the roof. We just lifted off, put it on the side, took the old steam generators out, put the new ones in, and then put the roof back in, uh, in place again. So that all, the, all those things, they are possible. If you look to the, uh, to the decommissioning, those power plants are being um, average 40, 50 years old maybe, so even maybe designed uh, earlier. How do you look at the experience of the, the plans and the knowledge which is out there? What we are lucky in, uh, in the nuclear industry is because it has always been a very documented industry. I mean, yeah. at least for the, the electric generation uh, nuclear reactors. So, so most, most of the time, the, the data are there, but they are, uh, let's say, hidden in, uh, in uh, the tons of paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's always good to, let's say, to, to have uh, some people uh, operating the plant. This is why I think one of the solutions can is to have in the decommissioning, let's say, team, uh, one of the last operator of the plant, because he knows he knows about the plant and he, know, he knows about that. Okay, Jan, let's, let's speak a little more about safety. As you know, safety is very important in, uh, in nuclear, as in many industries. And uh, how do you think that you, you can bring uh, the, the nuclear safety in the, the culture of uh, mammoth safety? Yeah, uh, very, uh, very good question. Uh, so what we do see also in our whole industry, that the safety is getting more and more important, not only in the nuclear, but everywhere, all around the world. Yeah, we as, uh, as Mammoet, we want to be a market leader in many areas, but we want, definitely want to be a market leader in the safe, uh, safe execution. And it has a lot to do with training, yeah, because I think many times that the people, yeah, it's important that the people are well trained for the skill they have to do. Also, one big concern of the customer is about the cost, because as I told you from the beginning, at the time where the, the decommissioning is coming, the amount of money is known, yeah. and uh, all, all additional uh, dollar or euro is, uh, is a loss. You know, yeah. How do you think that we can convince the, the customer that uh, uh, Mammoth can bring, uh, the, let's say, the right solution at the right price with a good efficiency uh, in order that the, at the end of the day, the job will be done within the budget. Yeah. So if you come, if you, if you are involved too late and decisions are already being made, so then we just have to follow. And then we have to uh, come up with uh, cranes or with certain things based on decisions being made in the past. I, I strongly believe if we are involved early on, and we can really be part of the total solution and that we come up with the most optimized plan based on all our experiences and all around the world on, on different industries as well. Because in the end of the day, the total cost of the decommissioning, I think time 
is an extremely important factor. So if we can reduce time by being smart, yeah, maybe our cost might be even higher, but the total cost might be lower. And in the end of the day, for the decommissioning project, it's all about total cost. So if we can come up with maybe what people think is an extremely expensive solution, but if we are able, for example, to reduce the total uh, decommissioning time by 10, 20 percent, it's huge. So now I think we have a lot of questions in front of us. So let, let me raise the first question to you. Does Mammoth work in all type of reactors regarding different standards, PWR, BWRN? What is the... Yeah, we, we do. I think we worked in, uh, in all kinds of different uh, countries with all kinds of different concepts of reactors. So uh, from, from Siemens, can do, uh, GE, everything. What are the services Mammoth can support in? Is Mammoth also helping in transport or is it just lifting heavy objects out of the plant? Uh, basically, we can do everything. Yeah, so we are uh, we are doing lifting, we are doing transport, we do small, we do big, and in all places of the world. So, uh, how long does a decommissioning project typically take? Uh, again, it's depending on the country, but uh, I think it's around, uh, let's say, 15 years. Let's say, roughly speaking, five years of preparation and uh, license, and also uh, evacuating the, the spent fuel, and 10 years of work on site to, let's say, to, to dismantle the plant physically. Ah, interesting. When limited space is available, can we still use the mammoth cranes? We are used to uh, work in very confined spaces. Yeah? So we can work with cranes or either come up with all the other kind of uh, solutions. There's a space uh, limitation, is, uh, we see it as a challenge, not as an, uh, that it is not possible. Mm. It will challenge our brains. For more information on nuclear decommissioning, go to mammoth.com slash nuclear.